In the random access file this week, Macintosh. What else can one say? If people weren't talking about the Mac itself, they were talking about the Mac commercial. In any event, the long-awaited Macintosh is now on the market amidst an incredible amount of hoopla. Early reports from dealers indicate what is described as tremendous consumer response. Early readings from dealers also indicate some concern over Apple's plan to sell Macs to universities at nearly 60% off. The dealers fear an active, cut-price secondary market with students buying Macs for $1,000 and selling them at a profit and still undercutting dealers by about half. Apple chairman Steve Jobs talked about the new Mac during its unveiling earlier this week. Uh, and what's so exciting about Macintosh is while Lisa pioneered this amazing technology, this amazing software technology that makes this possible, with Macintosh, we've been able to take that software technology and pull it down into a price range that's going to be affordable, not just to the corporation, as Lisa is, but to the individual. The Mac is basically a mini Lisa with a 32-bit microprocessor, one built-in 3.5-inch microfloppy, a mouse, and a 9-inch black and white monitor. The retail price is $2,500, and most analysts are saying that the success of the Macintosh is critical to Apple's future. Most reviewers have given the Mac excellent marks. However, some say that the lack of color on the Mac may limit its appeal. Meanwhile, the Macintosh got a nice early boost when the accounting firm of Pete Marwick announced that it will buy 2,500 Macs to be carried around by its auditors for use in on-site audits. The move makes Pete Marwick the first major accounting firm to send its auditors out into the field with computers. The importance of Macintosh to Apple's future was emphasized this week as first quarter earnings reports started surfacing. Apple's net profit fell 75 percent. The reasons cited were slow Lisa sales, price cuts on the 2E, and heavy R&D costs related to the Macintosh. Digital equipment reversed its drop and showed a 40 percent increase in earnings, by the way, and IBM reported earnings up nearly 25 percent during the last quarter. And a market research report released this week shows that IBM and IBM clones now have about 60% of the office PC market. The report projected that IBM machines would have more than 70% of the market by 1989. Well, this was the week of the Macintosh. IBM reported the start of volume shipments of the PC Junior this week. However, there were questions as to what volume really meant, as IBM warned that supplies would be limited. There were rumors that IBM was having problems due to parts shortages, but IBM said absolutely not. Last week, IBM announced the availability of a Unix system for the IBM PC. Now AT&T and Digital Research have announced a deal to jointly develop and distribute software based on AT&T's Unix operating system. Digital's president and CEO, by the way, is Gary Kildall, host of the Computer Chronicles. While Apple this week was singing the virtues of its new 32-bit Macintosh, giant Hewlett-Packard announced that it was dropping plans to market a 32-bit computer. HP said instead it will concentrate on a new breakthrough product for release in 1985. Gene Omdahl's Trilogy computer ran into problems this week as Trilogy announced a delay in shipments of its new supercomputer. There were reportedly problems with the first prototype chips. Trilogy is developing two and a half inch square wafer chips that will replace as many as 100 conventional chips. Apparently the prototype chip had problems with its metal coating leading to shorting and overheating. Fairchild of Mountain View got slapped on the wrist this week as the Pentagon took Fairchild off its list of approved suppliers. The Defense Department said Fairchild had failed to comply with government specified quality control standards. In the world of software, MicroPro of San Rafael announced this week that it will go public with an offering of 2.5 million shares in March. MicroPro is best known for WordStar. And a new report by a software publishers group says that software piracy in the United States is now costing the software industry $20 billion a year. Some estimates say that nearly 80% of the software in use is pirated. Finally, there was almost more interest this week in Apple's Macintosh commercial than there was in the computer itself. The half a million dollar TV spot ran during last weekend's Super Bowl and caused quite a sensation. Some thinking it was absurd, some thinking it was fantastic. The popular analysis of the spot was that Apple was picturing IBM as Big Brother with Macintosh as the hero of the people. Well, we'll see. That's it for this week's Random Access. I'm Stuart Chaffe. Random Access is made possible by a grant from Popular Computing, a McGraw-Hill magazine.